All right, guys, so we're going to do something a little bit different here today. What you see here is a large array of hard drives connected to a Raspberry Pi. These are all external hard drives, and this is farming Chia coins. I'm not going to get too much into what Chia coins are exactly, but basically it's a proof of storage uh, cryptocurrency. I've got a very large array of hard drives, and there is a spaghetti mess of wires. It's all plugged into one power strip. I would consider this to be very unsafe. Now, each one of these hard drives is probably pulling about 10 watts or less, so it's... I mean, technically that power strip is nowhere near being overloaded, but this is still very dangerous and very unsafe. So today what we're going to do is work on getting these wires cleaned up. We're going to mount all these hard drives and power them all with a centralized power supply to get rid of these transformers here. Just want to take a note on my kilowatt meter here. We're pulling about 86 to 87 watt. I want to be able to see once I convert this to a single power supply if it's actually consuming more or less power. All right, so I built this little uh, bench thing here out of some scrap wood I had laying around. So I've got two shelves created with the thought being that I can put the horizontal hard drives on the bottom shelf like you see here. And then I can put the larger vertical hard drives on the top like this. So for powering this setup, I picked up this uh, Meanwell. It's an LRS 350-12. So this is a 350 watt 12 volt power supply and it will work on 120 or 240 volts. There is a little switch here on the side to set a specific voltage. And one reason I picked this particular power supply is because it does carry a UL rating. There are a lot of these 12 volt power supplies on Amazon. You know, the cheaper kind that uh, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trust. I, I don't want, I don't want something that's gonna start a fire here, so. This is good for up to 29 amps, and that is a continuous output. So I did pull the data sheet for this power supply, and it does have a small surge rating. It's not much, but it does have a small surge rating because these hard drives will pull about 7 to 8 watts in my testing when they're spinning and just running idle. Um, however, they do draw anywhere from 2 to 3 times that amount of power on startup when they're first spinning up. I made sure to size my power supply, keeping in mind both the continuous rating and the fact that the drives would be surging a little bit on startup. And I think I'm going to mount that power supply on the right-hand side like so. And the power supply did come with these little L brackets, which is nice, so it's ready to go right out of the box. And now for the distribution and fusing, I have this 8-circuit, uh, this is an automotive 12-volt uh, fuse box, fuse panel. So I can put 8 individual fuses here, and it's important to fuse this because this puts out 29 amps, and if one of your hard drives fails, you don't want to kill all of your hard drive. So I think this was rated for 50 amps or so. I don't know that I would put 50 amps through it, but I certainly have no doubts that it would handle the 30 that this power supply can put out. All right, so with that installed, I just have a small piece of uh, 10 gauge silicone insulated wire here that I'll use to connect the main positive from the power supply to the distribution box. Uh, so next I've just got this little terminal strip. I'm gonna mount right to the side like so. And this is gonna be where I land all the negative conductors. And I have the first three joined, the second three joined, and the last two joined, uh, each going up with a number 14 wire to the negative outputs of this power supply. I did it this way just so I didn't have to worry about fitting a thick number 10 or multiple number 12s uh, in each one of these ring terminal slots here. So this bus bar is rated for 30 amps, by the way. All right, so these are the USB hubs I'm using. They are USB 3, 10 ports per each hub. So on the left-hand side here, I think I'm just going to mount them right on top of one another like so. Alright, so there we go, that came out pretty nice. Uh, there's no mounting brackets for these USB hubs obviously, so just punched a couple of holes for this plywood and I put two zip ties around each hub. And you can see they fit nicely on this side. And that leaves some space up here where we're going to mount our computer, which is going to be a Raspberry Pi 4. Alright, so I've got the Raspberry Pi 4 mounted here. And I did leave this a little bit loose, that way I can slide it out if I need to. Um, this is the 4 gigabyte version, and I do run both the Farmer and the Full Node on this device. I've never had any issues, and there's typically a gig and a half of memory still free. So, I'm going to continue with this until there's a reason to explicitly upgrade to the 8 gigabyte version. This device does run on 5 volt power, not 12 volt power. Going to power it with this small 15 watt, this is a 12 volt to 5 volt uh, 3 amp converter. Uh, so the 12 volt side just has a red and a black wire. And then the 5 volt side has a USB-C connector which will plug directly into the Raspberry Pi. And I'm just going to mount that device right here. So it's out of the way of the Ethernet cable and the USB connections. Alright, so the way we're going to connect our power to all of these devices, these hubs, uh, this power supply, and the hard drives, is I picked up these screw terminal uh, barrel plugs here. So this is the same size barrel that's on the AC power supply. 
Uh, it just has screw terminals where you can attach your power here. Um, the particular size for this one is a 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter. So that will plug directly into the side. Now if you're not sure which size uh, barrel connector you need, you can use one of these here digital calipers to measure. So you simply put it around the outside of the plug and you can see we're at about 5.5 millimeters on the outside. And then we have this top pointing side here we can use to measure the inside diameter. And you can see we're at 2.14 millimeters. So we know we need a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter plug. Now for the wiring for all this, I'm using this uh, 18 slash 2. That means it's 18 gauge 2 conductor. Uh, it's just thermostat wire. It's, uh, it's CM slash CL2 wire. So CL2 is a more standard specification. And you can see the two conductors here. There's a red and a white. This probably isn't the best choice of wire for something like this, but this is what Lowe's had, and I really didn't want to have to order more wire. So from what I'm reading online, this particular wire is rated for 150 volts, and it's good for approximately 8 to 10 amps. So I'm going to plan to run this uh, to each device. I'll probably run uh, one run of this to all three of these, since this is going to be well under uh, 8 amps. And I'll plan to fuse this at 7.5 amps. Uh, should a short circuit or something occur there. So I've got the red going to the positive and the white going to the negative. And uh, this connector here jumps up to this connector, which then goes up to our DC power supply for the Pi. As I'm doing this, I'm being very careful to check the original specifications for each device I'm connecting. Most devices assume the center pin is positive and the outer casing is negative. That's not always the case. So it's typically indicated on the power supply here. You can see this symbol indicates that the outer casing is negative and the inner pin is positive. In addition, before I actually power this on, I'm going to go around with the multimeter and measure all of these connectors out just to make sure the polarities are correct because it would really suck to plug one of these in wrong backwards accidentally and uh, blow up some expensive equipment here. All right, so that wire comes into the terminal bar here. You can see the negative is terminated on the first screw. The positive comes down and it goes to this first slot here. So since this is a solid conductor, I just wrapped it around the screw and tightened it down. The same way you would wire any standard receptacle, I don't see any reason to use a, uh, you know, a spade term or anything like that. So I've got a lot more leads to run. I'm going to get them all wired up and I'll go over and show you what I did. All right, so here's the setup from the back side. Got all of the power connections done. I ended up doing three drives per run of wire, so you'll see there are three connectors together and then a separate run starts, those three are together. Up here those three are together, and I've got a series of three more connectors. And I need to do some cleanup of the actual wiring itself, but you can see they all go back here. The white wires all end up on the ring terminals, this one's not connected just yet. And the red wires all go back to the distribution fuse panel. One thing also that I wanted to note was that the connector used on the hard drive was slightly different than the connector used on the USB hub, even though they are both 12 volt barrel connectors. Uh, the connector for the hard drive was 5.5 millimeters by 2.5 millimeters on the inside pin, whereas this one was uh, 2.1 millimeters. So it's a difference of 0.4 millimeters, and believe it or not, they are not cross compatible. You won't get a good connection if you use this one on this device and you won't be able to physically plug this one into the hard drives. So now it's time to get the USB cables connected and there are a lot of USB cables and believe it or not, this is not all of them. Just going to start at the front of the USB hub and go one by one back to the hard drive and try to run these as neatly as I can. All right, so here's the completed wiring. You can see all of the USB cables there. They are nicely bundled. I wrap them up behind all of the hard drives. And same with the bottom row there. They're all tied up behind those hard drives nice and neat. And then I have one USB that comes out of each hub. And they go into the USB 3 ports on the Raspberry Pi 4. And I just neatly tuck some of that extra cable down underneath there. So, Alright, so back on the power supply side here, we're ready to connect our AC input. Now I don't typically talk about AC in my videos because you know there's a possibility for a mistake which could be you know fatal. So if you don't know what you're doing, you know definitely contact somebody who does. So I got this cable here. It's just uh, something I cut off of an old appliance, and then I crimped on some ring terminals on the end. So the green is going to go to the ground screw, the white will go to the neutral screw, and the black will go to the line screw. Once again, if you don't know what you're doing with AC wiring, please contact someone who does. And there's this little uh, clear safety cover that goes over that just so you don't accidentally get hurt. 
Now, as I mentioned, I do want to verify the polarity of these connectors before I actually plug in any hard drives. So, um, there's no hard drives plugged into this harness over here. And this is going to the fuse slot right here. So these are the fuses I'm going to be using here. And these are standard uh, 12 volt automotive fuses rated for seven and one half amps. So the continuous draw on these wires is going to be about eight watts per hard drive after they're started up. And we have three hard drives per lead. So that's approximately 24 watts or two amps. So this fuse, I could probably get away with a five amp fuse in here for added safety, but uh, because of that initial surge when the hard drives spin up, I'm gonna go with a 7.5 amp. So I'm not putting any of the other fuses in just yet. And I can see there's now a green light emitting on the bottom left. And I have some lights emitting on my fuse holders here. And I'm going to put it on the positive here. So I've got 12.06 volts, that's perfect. And next I want to double check the polarity of this connector. So positive goes in the center. Outside, I've got 12.05 volts. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power supply. And it's at this point that I'm reminded that I never connected this last negative wire, so let's go ahead and do that now. I have these uh, four internal drives sitting on the top shelf temporarily. I do have four more of these vertical sitting drives, which will go on the top shelf. Uh, however, they aren't plotted just yet. And uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna permanently mount these internal drives. They will be down on this shelf. I know I've seen people have acrylic enclosures or whatnot that they mount those on just to stack them up nicely, and I'll probably put them down here. But for the purpose of this test, all of these drives are plugged in except for number 14 here. I want to get a power measurement. Remember we took the power measurement before and it was around 85 to 86 watts. And this drive was not plugged in when we took that original measurement. So these USB hubs have little switches for every single port. I have them all off. I typically boot up the Raspberry Pi with the USB drives disconnected just because when they're connected the Pi tends to take a long time to start. And by the, I should note too that this Pi is running uh, Ubuntu, Ubuntu Linux. Go ahead and plug it in, and here we go. Hopefully nothing uh, blows up. All right, I do hear the fan on the Pi is starting. And I see some network lights on the side, so we'll just give it a minute here and see if I can SSH into it. All right, so I was able to get an SSH connection, so we're good to go. And as you see over here, the Pi and two USB hubs are pulling 8.9 watts, approximately. All right, so now I'm ready to push all of the buttons for the hard drives here, and uh, hopefully they start up. Looking at the wall here, we're pulling about 200 watts during startup. It's dropping down pretty quickly as they spin up. All right, so after several hours of research and testing, I finally got this thing farming again. Adding the second USB seems to confuse it for a little bit. So with all of these drives, I have both of these USB 3 hubs plugged into the USB 3 ports on this Raspberry Pi. And what was happening was, uh, as soon as I go to mount the drives, uh, they would all drop out and I would get a message in the logs that said the X, was it the XHCI or XCHI interface, which is the USB uh, driver for the Raspberry Pi, uh, had failed and stopped responding, so it dropped everything. It's interesting because if I plug these hubs into the USB 2 ports, they would work fine. Um, so after quite a bit of research, I found that uh, disabling the UAS, or I think that's an acronym for Universal Attached Storage, or Universal Attached SCSI, I forget what the acronym stood for, but after disabling that, it's now working perfectly on the USB 3 ports. And we can see, looking at the kilowatt meter, we're around 86 to 88 watts, so it's pretty much the same as it was before. Uh, maybe two watts higher, but keep in mind, we did add a second USB hub. So unfortunately, adding that second USB hub did put me right at 29 devices, and that means I only have room for three more hard drives. Um, and I have four that I need to plug in, or five actually, because this one up here is not plugged in. So that'll put me over the limit of 32 devices by two. So, so it turns out one of these USB hubs, these 10 port hubs, counts as six devices. I have two hubs here, so that's 12 devices used up just with these hubs. So I'm thinking I either need to find a different hub, maybe that's, that's multiplied a little bit different, I don't know how the circuitry inside these hubs works, or possibly a smaller hub that just has the amount of ports I actually need to run the hard drives because I'm not planning to plug in 20 plus two on the Raspberry Pi, 22 devices into this Pi. All right, so here is the final setup. All of these drives are connected except for these two right here, which are still empty. I need to finish plotting those. Most of these are full of original plots. There's three or four of them, four of them that have new plots, the portable plots. So I'm slowly going through and replotting them all. Uh, for the four bare drives down here, I just secured them to a piece of aluminum DIN rail in the front and the back. 
And I've got space for one more if I ever need it, but you know, I'm hitting the USB device limit on the Pi the way it is, so I doubt I'll have room for anything else. So looking at the side here, uh, I have two free USB ports still, and there's two more USB 2 ports on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm thinking what I might do is see if I can pick up a 6 port USB hub instead of a 10 port USB hub and hopefully that will drop two devices off of the Pi consumed by the hub itself allowing me to connect those two remaining hard drives. And we've got a final shot of the back here. Like I said, these drives are not connected because they haven't been plotted yet, but they are ready to go. Additionally, down here I installed a large fan. This isn't 120, I think it's maybe 140 or 150 millimeter that keeps those internal drives perfectly cool. I do have the option of putting fans across the top here to cool these as well if needed, but I've never had problems cooling my external hard drives, and these are actually going to be down the basement where it stays fairly cool anyway. And then just one last look at the power distribution panel. I ended up putting a 5 amp fuse in here for the fan and the one hard drive. All the rest are 7.5 amps. So, Alright guys, so that's where I'm going to stop here. Uh, this is a total of 160 terabytes of storage. And hopefully I can get those last two drives so I can say I have 160 terabytes on one Raspberry Pi 4. The Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB is fantastic for running the full node in the farmer. I don't plan to purchase any more drives at this time until I see more output from the actual Chia farming process. But if I were to purchase more drives, I would probably build a second one of these. And I've got some older Raspberry Pi 2 and 3s I could use. I can't run the farmers on those unfortunately because it requires a Raspberry Pi 4. However, I can set those up as an NFS share on that Raspberry Pi and then mount them on the Pi 4 for farming. Yeah, if you liked this video or found it interesting, please hit that like button down below. I know it wasn't exactly battery related, however, I do have many other hobbies outside of batteries, so uh, thanks for watching.